guys welcome back hope you guys are feeling good my name is Bukumi Bike Crown so four mind-blowing miracles of Prophet Muhammad by Yassi Kaudi Ooh, pardon me guys let's check it out miracles that occurred with inanimate objects Miracles of the Prophet that occurred with neither animals, nor food, nor drink, nor inanimate objects. Things that are basically rocks and stones and of this nature. And of these are so many. Of them is the famous hadith in Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet said, I still recognize a stone, a hajab, that used to say salam to me every time I pass by it in Mecca before my prophethood. I still recognize that stone used to say salam to me before my prophethood. And Ibn Mas'ud said that one time, we heard the food that the Prophet put in his mouth say the tasbih while we were sitting around him, reported in Sahih al-Bukhari. The food saying Subhanallah as it was put in the mouth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in one hadith, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, the famous companion Abu Dhar al-Ghifari narrated that I was in a gathering with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and other of the Sahaba and the Prophet took a group of pebbles in his hand, hasa, you know the gravel, and we all heard the stones praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet passed these stones to Abu Bakr and they continued praising Allah in the hands of Abu Bakr. Then the Prophet took it back from Abu Bakr, gave it to Umar and Umar's hands, everybody heard in the audience, the stones saying Subhanallah. The Prophet then took it back, gave it to Uthman and they continued praising and we all heard, all of us heard this. Then after the Prophet left and we took those stones, nobody could hear anything coming from them. So, and this hadith is reported in Al-Tabarani's al usab Now, the point here is that, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ had picked those stones up and they're praising Allah. And it is as if by picking up the stones, the praise that is already emanating because everything praises Allah. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِنْ لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ There is nothing except that it praises Allah, but you don't hear it. You don't understand it. It is as if when He وسلم, touched those stones, all of a sudden the barrier between us and those rocks was lifted. And we could hear, or those in the audience could hear what the stones are always doing. And when He gave it to Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, that barrier was continued to be lifted. Then when he left وسلم, and the stones put down, everybody else is picking them up and the barrier has now returned back to where it is. And it is narrated in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad that once the Prophet was giving da'wah to one of the leaders of the tribes of Amir ibn Sa'a and the Prophet said, do you want to see an ayah, a miracle? He said, yes. So the Prophet said, look at that grove of date palms and call out to that small tree to come. So the tribal chieftain said, O oh, trunk of the tree, or it's a baby palm tree, it's not fully grown, O oh, baby palm tree, come. And the Sahabi says, the tree came crawling all the way until it stood in front of the chieftain. Then the Prophet said, Irja, go back. And the tree went back until it resumed its original post and the chieftain converted to Islam on the spot and he said, I shall never disbelieve in anything that comes from your mouth after this. Reported in Muslim Imam Ahmed and this shows us the purpose of a miracle. This man was ambivalent. This man was open-minded. He was shown a miracle, he converts on the spot. The leaders of Quraysh, doesn't matter what you would have done, they would never have converted. And of course, perhaps the most famous in this category of inanimate objects, perhaps the most famous incident is the trunk of the tree. The trunk of the tree of the mm. Prophet Sallallahu The entire masjid is jam-packed. Over a thousand people could fit in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Right? We have a thousand eyewitnesses that the Prophet Sallallahu when the masjid was initially built, so they had to cut down some stumps of the tree so that the masjid could be empty and they left one of the stumps right in the front so that the Prophet could give the khutbah on it. This was in the first year of the hijrah. By the time some wealth began to pour in the third year of the Prophet of the fourth year of the hijrah, so somebody said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, why don't we make for you a custom-made pulpit, a proper pulpit? Let's carve it out and put, you know, three steps in it. We'll do a proper pulpit. So he said, okay, if you want to do it. So one of the ladies of the Ansar, she had a servant who had trained in 
in the art of carpentry. Carpentry was not that common in Mecca and Medina. This is a trade. So she had a servant who was the most famous carpenter. So he was commissioned to build a pulpit. And so the pulpit was now moved to the middle of the masjid. Before this time, the pulpit was towards one of the sides because you cannot decide where the tree is. It just happened to be there. So the pulpit was towards the side. So now the pulpit is moved in the middle and the very first day that he is giving the khutbah, the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, it is reported by many sahaba, this is mutawatir, over a thousand eyewitnesses. What happens? The sahaba said, we began hearing a noise like the crying of a baby camel. Loud noises coming, like the crying of a baby camel. And the Prophet interrupted the khutbah and he came down from the mimbar and he hugged the tree and patted it until it stopped crying. It's sobbing and he patted it until it stopped crying. And then he said in one version, it is said that if I had not patted it and stopped it, it would have continued crying until the day of judgment. And he then commanded that the tree be uprooted and dug and put underneath his mimbar where it is to this day. To this day underneath where the, the Imam gives the khutbah underneath that somewhere is that tree. Whenever Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, the famous Tabi'i would recite this hadith, he would begin to cry. And he would say, a tree cried because it missed the Prophet Sallallahu and the knowledge that the Prophet spread. How about us and our hearts? Should we not cry as well for not having had the opportunity to hear our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Wow, mind blowing. <laughs> Um, guys, wow, this is beautiful. You know, all these things is mentioned is so, so new to me as a non-Muslim. I don't know much. The only thing I know is the adits. No, I don't really know much about it. But I know I, it's just beautiful to, you know, learn these new things about Prophet Muhammad. What um, the things he, he did or the things he had that is a miracle. Yes, like he spoke about the tree, you know, he spoke about you know, a lot of things and it was beautiful watching. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.